Hallelujah. Well, when I came in here, I was told I came for a youth meeting, not an elders forum. In the presence of the Lord, there is fullness of joy. And at his pleasure, they are precious forevermore. Come on, 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 get excited. You are shaking your body, you are moving your body, you are clearing the obstacles. Everybody, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Hallelujah. Thank you, precious Father. Blessed be your holy name. In Jesus' mighty name, we have praised. Tonight will be unforgettable in the life of somebody here tonight. I don't know who that person is, but I know minimum one person. You will live never to forget tonight again. The truth is this, there are nights and there are certain nights. There are days and there are certain days. When you encounter a certain day, you never forget it. You don't need to document it. It sticks. Today is February 23rd, 2024. It will be a certain day in one person's life. Well, if that person is here, your amen will show it. Something drastic, something unforgettable, something memorable, something you'll be testifying of for many years to come. You will pick it from this service tonight. You are shouting amen, shouting like a true believer. Lift up your hands where you are. Heavenly Father, again tonight, we are all gathered at your feet ready for strange visitations send your word with power Amen. baptize every one of us afresh with your unction Amen. let every body and every weight that anyone came here with let such be lifted Amen. if anyone walked in here with any trace of sickness or disease let it be lifted Amen. if anyone came here with any form of burdens heaviness depression let it be lifted Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. And let everyone's expectation tonight, let it not be cut off. Thank you, precious Father. Take all of the glory and take all of the praise. Someone expecting the biggest testimony, shouting the loudest, amen. Now, before you get seated, walk minimum to five people. High five them. Tell them something good will happen to you tonight. Something good will happen to you tonight. Come on, with faith, you ask something good to happen to you tonight. Oh, thank you. Hey, yeah, yeah. 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 Hey, yeah. Lift up your hands. Hey, yeah, yeah. Hey, yeah. Hey, yeah. what only you can do. Mm. 
Mm. Let there be an outbreak of your spirit in the midst of your people tonight. Open the floodgates of heaven. Mm, mm, mm. Open the floodgates of heaven. Let the channels of our spirit man be opened. something good will happen to you I'm praying for one person here I said something good will happen to you this God will never call for a meeting and be absent and in the presence of the Lord there's fullness of joy and at his right hand there are pleasures forevermore the Bible declares the Lord thy God in the midst of this mighty mighty Get set for mighty visitations in the name of Jesus Christ. Someone expecting the biggest testimony. Give Jesus the biggest clap tonight. Come on, and the biggest shout! Amen. Please be seated. Well, it's my joy. My joy. I'm excited tonight. That for the first time something is happening something is happening something is happening for the first time i'm having the privilege and the honor to be in the northeast region of this country and what a joy by the privilege of god and of his servant our father he approved for me to be here tonight as an extension of the liberation mandate. And tonight, everything the God of liberation can do will happen here tonight. Amen. Come on, if there's a believer, your amen will show it. Amen. I want to recognize the state pastor seated in our midst tonight. I recognize you, sir, and the grace of God at work in your life and I also honor all of the ministers the regional youth pastor the state youth pastor the regional youth pastor from Middle East um, not Middle Belt Middle Belt all the way from Bainway McCordy praise God and all of our pastors represented please give Jesus a big hand for this great man of God represented here tonight Tonight, I'll be sharing on a very crucial topic. And please, studio, help me with this mic. On a subject captioned, passion, passion, the covenant trigger for exploits. Passion, covenant trigger for exploits. 1 Corinthians chapter 2 and verse 9. The Bible declares, For eyes have not seen, ears have not heard, it had not entered into the heart of man. The things, the packages, the testimonies, the visitations, which God has prepared reserved and located for those that love him the best of God is reserved for lovers of God the best of God is reserved for lovers of God please hear this tonight 
We are in the midst of a revival. It is burning hotter and stronger by the day. And genuine passion for God is a major key to sustaining any revival. Genuine passion. A burning heart for God. An unquenchable zeal. Unquenchable love for God. Is a critical requirement for sustaining any revival. So when passion goes out, revival is out. Revival is fueled by the passion in the hearts of men. What is passion? Someone may ask. Number one, passion for God is simply an unquenchable hunger for God. Unquenchable. A dimension of hunger that cannot be satisfied unquenchable hunger for God. Hmm. Interestingly today, believers around the world, they are hungry for so many things. The hunger in the hearts of Christians across the globe, hunger for power, hunger for money, hunger for influence. Today, young people post, you don't like their post, they are offended with you. They post on social media. They are checking the number of likes. Am I saying something? Don't look at me like I'm speaking Greek. So many things taking over our hunger for God. Believers across the globe. So many things have taken the place of God. Very few are genuinely hungry for God. But I know that few they are here tonight. Come on, are you hearing what I'm saying? They are here tonight. May the hunger for God never be quenched in your life. Amen. Number two, what is passion? Passion is a drastic inner force. Drastic inner force that drives a person. A drastic inner force that drives a person towards an end. Jeremiah chapter 20 and verse 9. Hmm. Jeremiah 20 and verse 9. Then I said, I will not make mention of him, nor speak anymore in his name. Did you see the, the, the drama uh, Joy Company presented? Amazing. Paco. What's the name of the lady that was? Uh, it's Paco, right? Paco. She was Paco in. And here was the one who led the other one to Christ. Off touch. Off key. He said, I, then I said, I will not make mention again. I'm tired. Nor speak anymore in his name. He said, but his word was in my heart as burning fire. Shut up in my bones. I could not forbear. There's a dimension of the revival fire that begins to burn inside us. You can't stop us. Get ready. This generation God is raising will become unstoppable. Fire shot up in my bones. I could not forbear. I could not be restrained. I could not be stopped from speaking about Jesus. I could not be cowed down. Not to stand for the faith I believe. Today you see Christian believers. They can't stand for Christ. They hide their Bibles. In the midst of their peers at work. They can't stand bold for Christ. And say I'm a believer. We saw Jesus. The passionate Christ. In Matthew 21. Verse 12 and verse 13. Matthew 21. 12 and verse 13. Jesus went into the temple of God and with passion and zeal he began to cast them out all those that were selling he was flogging them flogging them out of the temple and he overthrew the tables of money changers and the seat of them that sold doves and verse 13 hear what the 
testimony of Jesus and said unto them, it is written, my house shall be called the house of prayer. And have you forgotten that we are living temples of Christ? Know ye not that your body is the temple of the living God and the spirit of God dwells on your inside. So this body is the temple of God. And from that scripture it said, it shall be called the house of prayers. There's a drastic inner force that wakes you up at 2 a.m. and you begin to blast in tongues. You are in your place of work. All of a sudden things are shifting. People are trying to act funny. You switch in the spirit. I was teaching some days, some weeks back and I said the language of tongues is the language of heaven. Every community we have our languages. When you come to the north they speak Hausa. Here in Yola, there may be another kind of house, maybe not a regular house, they may have a native one. Are you hearing what I'm saying? And anytime you want to isolate someone from the conversation, switch to that language. Oh, that, speaking in tongue is the language of heaven. Every time you want to isolate the devil and his angels and his demons from the conversation, you speak the unknown tongue. A drastic inner force that drives us. That's what passion is. Unquenchable. Unstoppable. The truth is this. What matters in this kingdom is not what you drive, but what drives you. Let's stop going after it. things that hold no bearing. What drives you in this kingdom is what matters, not what you drive. You can't drive anything. Kingdom giants are not laid back personalities, but they are passionate entities. There's something burning inside them. You, you can't deny it. I pray for everyone within the sound of my voice tonight. Upon your return from here, your love for God will be like fire shot up in your bones. It will be moving you beyond your will. Have you seen a drunkard before? Do they sell Burukutu in this part of the world? They sell? Okay. I was born in Kaduna. I grew up in Kaduna. I'm going yellow, Sabo. Uh, those days when you want to get high, not me. <laughs> they settle down in those broke to joints and they begin to take cup by cup cup by cup something is changing cup by cup something is changing cup by cup the eye is getting blurred cup by cup the language is changing have you met a drunkard before is this what normal people don't see you are not catching what i'm saying he sees what normal people don't see. He says what normal people can't see. Because there's something inside him that is driving him. It is driving him. It is driving him. When your love for God comes on this frequency, something else is driving you. You say things natural people can't see. You see things normal people can't see. Because there's another engine on your inside. May everyone's heart be open tonight. May new dimensions of passion and love for God enter our hearts tonight. If you're shouting amen, shout it like a true believer. Now when this fire comes, it keeps us going, season in, season out. Romans chapter 1 and verse 16. Paul the apostle declared, for I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. There's something inside me that cannot make me get ashamed. A drunk man is not ashamed though. You are the only one pitying him. He's pitying you. He may be naked, but to him he's well suited. He can be advising you. Oh boy, don't dress like this next time. 
Can't you see the way your shirt and your trousers are? It's, it's, it's only wearing pantu. But can't you see how I look? <laughs> I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. For it is the power. Say with me, power. power. Come on, say some more power. power. Let me see you do your hand like this. Say power. power. So the gospel of Christ is the power of God. Unto salvation to anyone and everyone who believes. Everyone and anyone who believes. So when this passion is at work in a man, you become unstoppable. What stops others can't stop you. What pushes others off key can't push you off. You are like a moving train. Unstoppable. Because the love of God is driving you. Romans chapter 8, from verse 35 to 39. Here what Paul the apostle, a lover of God, a passionate servant of God. He said, who shall separate us? Who? Shall separate us from the love of Christ. Now watch all the things he began to list. Tribulation. Say, forget it. Distress. Mm -mm. Persecution. Forget it. Famine. Like we are having today in this nation. Famine, nakedness, peril, sword, as it is written, for thy name we are killed all the day long. He said, We are counted as sheep for the slaughter. Nay, in how many things? Come on, talk to me like you tonight. In how many things? In spite of this, in all these things, we are more than. Conqueror. How many more than conquerors are in the house tonight? He was simply saying that bring your best devil, I will not shift my ground. Let the challenges come. Lovers of God are unmovable. Men and women passionate for God and the advancement of his kingdom, they are not shaking while others are shaking. I'm going somewhere tonight. But interestingly, passion is not a gift. It's a choice. Love for God. Love for the kingdom. Love for the promotion of the agenda of the kingdom. is not a gift. It's a choice. So stop saying, I don't have the gift of love. I don't have the gift. Maybe somebody has had me. Senior pastor has the gift of love, but I don't. Passion for God is not a gift. It's a choice. 1 Corinthians chapter 9 and verse 16. Here Paul again, the lover of God. He said, for though I preach the gospel, I have nothing to glory for. For necessity is my choice. Necessity is laid upon me. Yea, woe is me if I preach not the gospel. He was simply saying, I've made my choice. It was simply saying, I don't know about you, but as for me, I've made my choice. Necessity is laid. I've taken my stand for God and I'm not shifting ground. When you find a believer that has passion for God, it cannot be hidden. It cannot be hidden. Now listen to some qualities of passion. The boundary of your passion is the boundary of your vision. The boundary of your passion for God is the boundary of your vision from God. So where vision stops with God is where, where passion stops with God, I beg your pardon, is where vision stops from God. God stops showing. Where passion stops with God is where vision stops from God. So when your passion and your love for God keeps burning hotter, it keeps unveiling new chapters. 
chapter after chapter. Visions after visions. And how we need vision as young people today. He said, I've spoken to you young men. The, the quality of the youth is vision. Say, your young men shall see visions. God will open somebody's eyes here. I, I'm praying for one person. I don't know who that person is. But God will open your eyes from this mountain. There are certain things blocking our eyes. From seeing the fullness of all that God has reserved and packaged for us. But when you find a passionate believer, a lover of God, he said it takes away the scale of the eyes. The boundary of your passion is the boundary of your vision. The limitation of your passion is the limitation of revelation. Hmm. For eyes have not seen, ears have not heard. It has not filtered into the heart of any man the things that God has reserved not for churchgoers. Come on, help me. Not for just every youth. But for those that love him. Those that love him. So where your passion stops is where his revelation stops. Revelation simply means reveal. He's simply revealing to you the secret things. I remember the secret things belongs to God. Deuteronomy 29 verse 29. But the things which he reveals to us is what reveals us to our world. There's just one secret God will show you here and the world will celebrate you. One, 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 one. Just one secret, one revelation and the world will be at your feet celebrating God. One, one. And interestingly, there are no secrets between God and his lovers. God does not hide secret between himself and his lovers. If you find a lover of God, you have found a custodian of the secrets of God. If you find a genuine lover of God, you have found a custodian of the secrets of God. Hear what he said concerning Abraham in Genesis 18 from verse 17 to 19. He said, shall I hide? And the Lord said, shall I hide from Abraham the things which I do? I can't hide my secrets from my lover. We're in a love relationship. There's passion between me and Abraham. I can't hide it. Amos chapter 3 and verse 7. He says, surely the Lord will do nothing, but he revealeth his secret to his servants. There are people that God will not make a move until he reveals it to them. They are custodians of the secrets of God. These people are genuine lovers of God. So the deeper your love, the deeper your access. The deeper our love for God, the deeper our access with God. Hmm. Many of us, maybe we are married, some of us are married. Some will be married this year. Don't be shy to say amen. Come on. In fact, many will be married this year. And gloriously so. You'll be gloriously married. I'm praying for one person here. I said you'll be married this year gloriously. When you find people in love, they don't keep secrets. You can be dating somebody in Mubi. Mubi, right? There's a place they call Mubi. Five hours from here, right? The person knows everything. You know where you are. They may even know the role of the seat you are sitting in church. I've often said the house of your lover is never far. Are you hearing what I'm saying? You are going to move. You say, I'm coming. I'll be back. I just want to. I'm, just, I'm not going far. It's not far in your eyes because you are in love with that person. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Before I got married to my wife, 11 years ago, 11 by March. Those days I could fly from Port Harcourt, from Cross River, from Makwa Ibom. Like I was going to my, the hotel five minutes. I felt it was like five minutes. There was something else moving me. Are, are you hearing what I'm saying? I tell my colleagues, I'll be back. They say, where are you going? I'll be back. I'm not going far. And I'm going to the airport. Oh. I'm not going far. 
Because in my eyes, it's not far. The house of your lover is never far. When people say, I can't come to church because it's far, they are not in love. They're not in love. They're not in love. You know, there's no distance when you are going to your lover's house. You saw the journey is so wonderful. You don't feel the bumps. There the road is bad. You are, not, you are not driving on the road. You are driving on love. Am I saying something? You are just cruising on love frequency. Because there's something that's moving you. So women are looking like me like you don't know what I'm talking about. <laughs> so when you find a genuine lover of God, God will go any length to reach out to that person. God is seeking for genuine lovers. In these last days, God is looking out for passionate believers, not cold believers, not religious ones. He's looking for people with burning desire, unquenchable zeal, burning inside their heart for God and for the advancement of his kingdom. When God finds such, he has found another giant. Please hear this tonight. One core difference between believers today is our passion level. Passion level. The level of our love for God. Different levels. I had God's servant, our father, say many years ago. He said, you may read all the books I've ever written. You may read all. He said, you may listen to all my tapes, but never claim to have found my secret until you know my heart beat for God. He said, I love this God to a dimension. This God knows I love him. He said, I love him more than my wife. I love him more than myself. Then what are you talking about, children? I love this God so hard and so bad that he knows. And the truth is this, if somebody loves you, you too, you will know. Women of God, when your husband loves you, you know. His body language shows he loves you. His pocket language shows he loves you. <laughs> Am I saying something tonight? Yeah. Everything about him shows that, hey, he loves me. So when the man just saying, I love you, I love you, he says, this one, I yeah, yeah, love. Love, we no follow with substance, now yeah, yeah, love. Have you seen more that say, now yeah, yeah, love? Okay, love me what? If you love me, it will show. Action. Action. It is your passion for God that determines your portion with God. Your passion for God defines your portion with God. It's my prayer tonight that every one of us will leave this place tonight with burning passion. It will indeed be like fire shot up inside our bones. Peter, the great apostle, passed the test of passion. John chapter 21 from verse 15 to 17. Jesus gave Peter a test. So when they are dying, now follow the scripture carefully, they are eating. They are dying. Then Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of Jonas, lovest thou me more than these? Stop there for a moment. Peter had seen Jesus perform all kinds of miracles, open blind eyes, feed thousands of people. He had seen all the miracles. He had seen Jesus bring out money from the mouth of fish. So he had a revelation and an experience that with this God, all things are possible. But Jesus was saying to him, Peter, son of Jonas, do you love me more than these things you have seen me do? Are you following me for the miracles I can perform? Are you following after me for the signs and the wonders? Are you following after me because I can expand your destiny? Lovest thou me more than these things? I hear what Peter said. Yeah, Lord. Thou knowest that I love thee. Then he said to him, feed my lambs. And he asked him the second time, verse 16. 
He said to him again the second time, Simon, son of Jonas, lovest thou me? He said unto him, Yea, Lord, thou knowest that I love thee. And he said to him, Feed my sheep. And Jesus asked him that third time, Jesus is not a stammerer, he does not make mistakes. He asked him the third time, Simon, son of Jonas, lovest thou me? Peter became grieved. Say this one, you're asking too much. Because he said unto him the third time, lovest thou me? That's the same question Jesus is asking every one of us here tonight. Lovest thou me? Are you following after me for what you can get from me? Are you following after me because of the miracle signs and wonders? Or do you love me for love's sake? At the beginning days of this ministry, God said unto our father, he had a wonderful Volkswagen B2 car. Very wonderful. You know Volkswagen? Come on, do you know Volkswagen? It's no more in vogue. In fact, it can't be in vogue. The kind of Volkswagen we're talking about. He said when that Volkswagen is moving, it is self-announcing. By the volume of the noise that comes. So you know, brother David is coming. But it's no more there. The places he was driving that Volkswagen is flying over them today. But he made a statement and I caught that statement. And he said, Jesus knows that if I were still driving that Volkswagen P2 40 years after, my love level will not change. When he said that statement, I said, what? What? He said, if I were still driving my run down Volkswagen B2, my love for God will not have shifted ground. He said, and Jesus knows. You know one thing about God? He knows the heart of every man. He does not look like man looks. Man looks on the outside. You can deceive people with the outside. Oh, this brother loves Jesus. God said, I lie. I lie. God does not look like man looks. Man looks on the outside. But God looks where? Inside the heart. So when he made that bold statement, I now understood why God would give him aircrafts. Heart for God. Genuine love for God. The same way Jesus asked Peter in John 21 is the same way he's asking every one of us tonight, lovest thou me more than this? There are certain people, if things don't go the way they want, they leave church. Oh Lord, I'm believing for a miracle between now and end of March. If it doesn't come, I will march away. And they go. About six years ago, I was privileged to pastor one of our churches on the foreign mission. And there was this family. They've been believing God for the fruit of the womb for about over 20 years. They're from one African nation. And when we got there, all kinds of miracles began to happen. Those that were waiting all of a sudden, God started visiting them. Strange things were just happening by the hand of God. And I kept asking the Lord, Lord, why is nothing happening to this couple? Why? Something is wrong. And the Lord began to minister to my heart that just at the verge of their breakthrough, they turned back on him. So I called the man to my office. And I began to speak to him gently. And I was trying to poke and find out his adventure in the faith. How have you moved serving God? And I discovered there were so many breaks. After a while, offense will come. They pack their load, they leave church. Three or four months later, they pack their load, they come back. And then I said to him, I said, hey, I was praying and this is the picture I was catching. That at the verge of your breakthrough, you turn back. Offense comes. You get angry and you start the journey and you have been doing that for 20 years. I said, call your wife. Sat them down, spoke to them. But I knew inside me that they didn't, carry, they didn't catch it. Three months later or two months plus later, I noticed I stopped seeing the wife frequently in church. 
And I called the husband. I said, what's going on? He said, no, she's just busy. I said, mm -mm 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 -mm. that thing has come again. It has come again. It has come again. He said, no, pastor. No, 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 no. It can't happen. It can't happen. Gradually, gradually, you see her one Sunday in a month. The next thing, the man too stopped coming for morning prayer. Gradually, gradually, before you know, the same circle. And that's the same undoing many Christians have. They are following after God for what they can get from God. They are users of God. And God knows. God knows. He knows the heart of man. He said before him, everything lays bare. Lovest thou me more than this? A word of caution to every one of us here tonight. Let's be careful seeking after things. Let's start seeking after God. Let's be wary and careful of seeking after things. Let's start genuinely seeking after God. Matthew chapter 6 from verse 25 to 33. Therefore I say unto thee, take no thought for your life, what you shall eat, what you shall drink, not yet for your body, what you shall put on. Is not the life more than meat and the body than raiment? Behold the fowls of the air, for they sow not, neither do they reap, nor gather into bands. Yet, say with me, yet. yet. Come on, put some life to it. Say yet. yet. Yet your heavenly Father feedeth them. Are ye not much better than they? <laughs> Verse 27, quickly. Which of you by taking thought can add one cubic to your statue. Tap your neighbor, tell that person, relax. Come on, come on, come on. Do that. Shake the person, say, relax. Relax. God has got you covered. Take no thought. Who amongst you by worrying add one cubic to your statue? Jump to verse 33. And that's the anthem of every winner. He said, but seek ye first. Can I see you do your hand like this? Seek ye what? Come on, help me. Seek ye what? The kingdom of God. And his righteousness. And all these things. What to wear. What to eat. Everything you will ever need from verse 25 to 32. Shall be added unto thee. And when God began to espouse that scripture to God's servant, he said, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things that others are dying to get will be added. There are so many things the world is dying to get. God is saying, as long as you put me first, I will add them to you. Get ready. You are getting into the realms of additions. Before you finish thanking God for the testimony, another one will be added to it. While you are yet lifting up your hand and thanking God, another one will be added to it. You are shouting, Amen, your testimony is established. It takes passion to put God first. It takes genuine passion to put God first. I always ask people, oh, as believers, we always claim that God is number one. And I ask them, what is that thing in your possession? If God should ask of it now, you will think twice. You're driving with a car, you have been believing God for 10 years, and after 10 years, God visits you with a car, and you are cruising. And all of a sudden, God says, give me that car. <laughs> in the name of Jesus, the voice of the stranger will not hear in the name of Jesus, I rebuke you, foul spirit, for the blessings of the Lord, they make it rich. They add no sorrow. You begin to quote scriptures to bind God. What is that thing in your hand that is too big to give to God? What is that thing? What is that thing in your hand that is too big to let go for God? In the year 2009, 
Shiloh. I just bought my first brand new car. I'd bought other vehicles before, but that was the first tear rubber brand new car. I still remember the plate number. RW601AAA. I'm blessed with multiple vehicles today. I don't know any of their plate numbers. But that one, I can never forget it. Like, even when I get to heaven, I remember it. <laughs> and I came for Shiloh at the impartation service. I lifted up my hand. Oh, God, I just love you. Lord, I want to give you something that cost me something. He said, give me that car. I changed position. I said, Father, in the name of Jesus. Oh, I love you. I want to give you something that cost me. He said, give me that car. I shifted. Father, thank you. Oh, Lord, I love you. I want to give you. He said, when you finish, give me that car. Ha. Ah. The car still had nylon on it, oh. That car was terrible. You touch that car, I will touch you. He said, give me that car. You claim you love me. I said, <laughs> I love you, Lord. He said, give me that car. I said, thank you, Jesus. I went, picked my small bag, packed all my belongings, put into that bag, drove the car to the church office, met one of the pastors at the reception. And I said to him, Pastor, I brought a seed for the Lord. He said, okay, what is it? I said, I gave him the khaki. He said, that's your car? Because everyone that knew me knew that car. When I'm driving, I'll be waving. You know this kind of wave that you see other people that have mocked me before. Huh? You know some waves that look like you are doing something else. You say, that's your car? I said, yes. You say, hallelujah. Oh. I still remember, hallelujah. Oh. And I turned back. And from that time, everything turned. I gave the car on Saturday. By Monday, someone else gave me a car. Well, by the blessing of God, vehicle is not prayer point. Longest time. Long, long, long time. In multiples. Long, long, long time. But per adventure, my claim for God was not as strong as my love for that car. And I refused. The car might have had an accident the following day. And per adventure, I'll still be trekking today. You don't know how much of your future you are jeopardizing because of the little things you can't let go for God. God is asking you tonight, lovest thou me more than this? As we begin to wrap up tonight, there are too many things that have taken the place of God in our lives. As young people, too many things. TV. A young person cannot pray for 30 minutes but can watch series for 5 hours. Am I saying something? Without any feeling of pressure. We relax with a cup of Coke and maybe popcorn. Series 1, Episode 1. Before you know, five hours, you now get up, you stretch, you speak in tongues. Ah! Thank you, Jesus. For what? A young person cannot stand before God, studying the word for one hour, yet he can sit down and make hair for six hours. You see people in church today, when it's time for service, the pastor spends two minutes beyond the time. They're looking at their time. This pastor should finish on time. I have things to do. In the presence of the Lord. And what are the things to do? I want to watch football match. Some of you know what I'm talking about. Too many things have taken the first place in our lives. So subtly. Social media. Instagram. Facebook. X. 
TikTok. And you are jumping from one to the other before you know six hours gone. Yet you can't stand before the Lord in the study of his word for 20 minutes. But well, something is changing from tonight. I've come to pray for one person. I said something is changing from tonight. Now all through scriptures, we see instances of passion made giants. Think about Paul the apostle. He came last. Never had the privilege of working with Jesus in the flesh. He was the least of the apostles. But he became the greatest of them. So great that even the devil acknowledged him. Jesus I know. He didn't say Peter or James I know. He said but Paul I know. He came last but he overtook all of them. But he had the secret of Paul. Philippians chapter 1 and verse 25. For me to live is Christ. And to die is gain. He said having this confidence. Philippians 1 and verse 25. From, sorry, from, verse, from 21, I beg your pardon. Philippians 1, let's read from verse 21 to 25. For me to live is Christ, and to die is gain. Quickly, verse 22. He said, but if I live in the flesh, this is the fruit of my labor. Yet what shall I choose? I would not. Now watch the dimension Paul the apostle was walking in. He said, for I am in a strait betwixt two. Having a desire to depart and to be with Christ, which is far better. Nevertheless, to abide in the flesh is more needful for you. Paul, the love of God, was saying, I'm in between. Deciding whether to go to heaven or to remain here on the earth. He said, I'm a lover. I'm in control. I've walked in certain dimension of love for God that I can determine what happens to my future. He said, I'm in between making a decision to go to be with Christ, which is more beneficial for me, or to remain in the flesh, which is more beneficial for you. Verse 25. He said, and having this confidence, I know. I know. Lovers of God, they truly know. There's no guesswork in your love with God. He said, for I know. That I shall abide and continue with you all for the furtherance and for the joy of your faith. He said, I'm crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. Yet not I, but Christ that liveth in me. Galatians 2 and verse 20. That was the love of God. He was in full command. He was in charge. Full charge of everything happening in his life. As I begin to close tonight. Someone seated somewhere here. A fresh fire from heaven. Is landing upon you tonight. It will be indeed like fire. Shut up in your bones. Your love for God. Your Passion for God will change frequency completely. Three proofs of genuine passion and we shut down. Number one, if you love God, you will love his house. If you love God, you will love his house. The psalmist said in Psalm 1, 2, 2 and verse 1, I was glad when they said unto me, come. Let us go into the house of the Lord. There's a kind of joy that comes into your soul when it's time to get to the house of God. It is not a burden. You want to prove your love for God? How much of your love for his house do you have? Or is going to church problem for you? Is serving God a burden to you? In Psalm 84 verse 10, it says, For better is one day in your court than a thousand. He said, I'd rather be a doorkeeper in the house of my God than to dwell in the tents of wickedness and wicked men. I'd rather be a doorkeeper in the house of God because of my affection for God. If I love God, I will love his house. 
Number two, if you love God, you will love souls. If you love God, you will love souls. John 3, 16, for God so loved the entire world. What did he do? He gave his only begotten son in exchange for the billions of souls we have today. This God is not slack concerning his promises. Second Peter chapter 3, verse 9, but is loving, not wishing that any should perish. Every soul carries equal value before God. There's no big man's soul. There's no poor man's soul. Every soul equal. Have you ever wondered that everyone comes to the earth the same way, naked as a child? And everybody lives the same way. Nobody goes with any money in his bank account. Every soul, no matter your status on the earth, equal value before God. If you love God, you will love souls. You will go after them. When you see a soul heading for destruction, you will pursue with everything on your inside. Because you know if you lose that one, you have lost that one to eternal condemnation. I said to myself recently, if every youth in this commission will come awake, doubling this church within one month is possible. If every youth in Winner's Chapel, Yola, comes awake, you will double this assembly within one week. Cheaply. I've spoken to you young men because you are strong. One of the core attributes of young people is our strength. When we are released as an army, we'll convert multitudes and bring them to Christ. And you know what we are doing? We are saving them from eternal condemnation, eternal damnation. There's no repentance after death though. At the instant life is cut, that's the end. It's not that after 10 years, God will say, okay, those in hell, they've suffered enough, come to this way. No, forever and ever. That's why he said, what shall it profit a man if he gains the whole world and loses his soul? So what will a man give in exchange for his soul? Nothing compares to it. Number three, and we stop there. If you love God, you will actively pursue his agenda. So seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all these things that others are pursuing after will be added cheaply to you. From tonight, fresh fire. From tonight, fresh passion. From tonight, fresh love for God. Is landing upon everyone here. If there's a believer in church, shout aloud, Amen. Amen. Rise to your feet. We all need a fresh baptism of passion. Passion for God. Passion for the advancement of His kingdom. Passion. 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 Remember I said the best of God is reserved for lovers of God. The best. The best. The best. God reserves his best for his lovers. So the question is this. The same way Jesus asked Peter, lovest thou me more than this? Before we close tonight. I want to give opportunity to at least a few people here tonight. You know that you know that you know if the trumpet should sound now. <clears throat> the Bible says one by one we shall all stand before the judgment seat of Christ. Not as friends, not as church members, not as winners youth. One by one. Your father can help you at that time. Your mother can help you. Your siblings, can, your spouse cannot help you. Your spouse will be judged the same way you'll be judged separately. Tonight, the 23rd day of February, 2024. What a day to make up your mind to begin a walk with God. All has bowed for a moment. All heads bowed for a moment. But adventure you are 
round about this auditorium tonight and you know that you know that you are not born again, why not allow me to pray with you? Or you were once born again but the pressures of life, challenges of life, you have shifted ground. You have moved away. Let me pray with you tonight. Lift up your hands where you are. You want to say yes to Jesus? Or you want to rededicate your life to him? Who is standing beside you is irrelevant. It's a personal decision everyone must make. Lift up your hand comfortably. Comfortably. Confidently. Lift up your hand across this place. Now, yes, I can see those hands. Confidently. Have no apologies. Have no apologies. With those hands lifted, everyone whose hand is lifted, take a bold step and come forward right now. Take a bold step and come forward. Come on, church, let's celebrate them as they come. Take a bold step. Take a bold step. Jesus is saving souls tonight. Keep coming, keep coming, keep coming, keep coming. Keep coming. That's the best decision you can make tonight. Come on, church, let's clap as they come. Into my soul. Keep coming, keep coming all across this place tonight. You are making up your decision, making up your mind to start for all the days of your life. minimum three people you are fighting that decision where you are standing you are thinking what do people say what will they not say you are fighting I, I, I'm very confident of what I'm saying tonight you are fighting the decision in your heart they know me in church what will they say hey is irrelevant thank you my brother is irrelevant it's irrelevant. Irrelevant. It's irrelevant. Thank you, my sister. It's irrelevant. It's irrelevant. Let your glory irrelevant. fall like fire, Thank you, Lord Jesus. like rain. Let it fall. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Please, everyone in front, bow your heads. Place your right hand on your chest. Say these words of prayer with me, Lord Jesus. Say it loud and clear, Lord Jesus. I come to you tonight. Forgive me my sins. Wash me with your blood. From tonight, be my Lord and Savior. From tonight, I give my life to you. I will serve you all the days of my life. And when my time is up on this earth, at a full old age, I will make it to eternity with you. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for accepting me tonight. From today, I'm a child of God. Thank you, Lord, in Jesus' mighty name. Now, I pray for everyone here tonight. Heavenly Father, thank you for these precious ones. Your grace has saved them. Let the same grace preserve them. Lord, the grace to serve you all the days of their lives. Let that grace be imparted upon each one of them. In the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, precious Father. Take all the glory. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Church, help me say loud, Amen. Please, they will take your details. And I promise to be praying for you. All of the plans of God for your life, they will begin to come to pass like a dream of the night. From this year, you begin to enjoy supernatural speed. In the name of Jesus Christ. Please go with our kingdom friends this way. They'll take your details and then you join us very quickly. Come on, church. Let's celebrate these precious people. Come on, get excited tonight. There is joy in heaven. There is joy in heaven. Tomorrow.
tomorrow night will be testimony night. There will be distribution of strange order of testimonies. In fact, there are many of us that will come with testimonies tomorrow. How many of you would like to receive some miracle alerts between now and tomorrow? Now, in the name of Jesus, like a dream of the night, what you have been believing God for for many years, it will come to you suddenly. This God that you serve, the God of this commission, the God of my father, Bishop David Oyedepo, and I'm licensed to stand in his shoes. I decree tonight, in the name of Jesus Christ, what God can do will happen for you. What God can make happen will happen for you. There are many of us upon our return tomorrow night at the testimony night. We'll be returning with tangible testimonies. In the name of Jesus Christ. And so shall it be. In Jesus mighty name. Lift up your hands. Come bless the Lord. O oh, ye servants of the Lord, who stand by night in the house of the Lord. time.